This story is called The Field of Buttercups, and it was written by Alice Bodden, but I have adapted it to tell to you. One day, Michael O'Leary left his mother's house. He was on his way to the village. He skipped along the road, and along the edge of the road, there was a low wall. As Michael walked along, he began to hear a strange tap, 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 tap. He was curious. So he crept over to the wall and peeked over. And there on the other side was a wee little man all dressed in green. He was holding a tiny shoe in one hand was turned over so that he could work on the heel. And in the other hand, he held a tiny silver hammer. And tap, 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 tap. He was tapping a nail into the heel of that wee shoe. Michael O'Leary knew that it was a leprechaun, a wee little magical creature. Now Michael knew that he had to grab that leprechaun and hang on to him and make him tell him where his gold was hidden. <laughs> Leprechauns make shoes for fairies and the fairies pay for their shoes in gold. Leprechauns love gold. They hide their gold. They save their gold. And they put it in strange places like the end of the rainbow. So Michael saw this leprechaun. With a great leap, he, he climbed over the wall and grabbed the leprechaun. Oh, whisk, look out, behind you. No, said Michael, you won't be fooling me that way. I've got you and I'm gonna hang on. You tell me where your gold is hidden. Ah, oh, now, you got me fair and square, said the leprechaun. But I'm not happy about it. Well, you don't have to be happy. Just show me where the gold is. All right, said the leprechaun. Put me up on your shoulder and I'll tell you. So Michael put the wee leprechaun on one shoulder and he held the leprechaun's wee little hand with the hand on that side. Now, said Michael, where's your gold? Well, just go down this valley and up over the next hill and down into the next valley. And when we're close, I'll tell you. All right, go, said the leprechaun. And off they went with Michael carrying the leprechaun on his shoulder. They went down into the valley and up onto the top of the next hill and then down into the next valley, which seemed to be completely covered with golden buttercups like places here are filled with buttercups these days in the middle of March. All right, where's the gold? asked Michael. Well, walk along through these flowers for just a moment and I'll tell you when to stop. Stop! Right there, said the leprechaun. You see that clump of buttercups at your feet? That's where my gold is. Dig there. Dig there? I don't have a spade. How am I going to dig there? Dunno, said the leprechaun. That's your problem. Hmm, <laughs> said Michael. He thought, well, I'm going to need to mark that clump of buttercups or I'll never find it. Look at all the clumps of buttercups round about. <laughs> well, now this was quite a long time ago when the fashion in men's stockings was for stockings to end right about under your knee and they would be tied by something called a garter, a ribbon that held your stocking up on your leg and then you wore your short pants over your knees to cover the garter or not if you really liked the garter. And Michael did because his were bright red. He thought, I could untie this garter off my right leg tie it around this clump of buttercups and then I'll be able to find it again when I come back. 
Why, sounds like a plan, said the leprechaun. Oh, but wait now. Leprechaun, you have to promise me that if I mark this clump of buttercups, you won't move my mark. I said the leprechaun, a promise. Very well, said Michael. He undid the red garter, turned loose of the leprechaun, who whoosh, disappeared in a moment. Michael bent down and wrapped that red garter around that clump of buttercups and tied it with a bright red bow. <laughs> said Michael, got him. He ran back through the buttercups, up the hill, down the valley, over the wall, down the path to his home. He ran into the front door and out the back door, crying, Mother, I'm home, but just for a moment. He ran out the back door, grabbed his spade that was leaning up against the house, ran back through the house. Bye, Mother, I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> Off he went, back down the path, over the wall, down the valley, up to the top of the next hill, where he could see that beautiful field of buttercups in front of him, just as he had left it. Except, now, every clump of buttercups was tied with a red ribbon. <laughs> oh, well, cried Michael to himself. I tried, didn't work, it was a good idea. Then, Michael thought, well, there's no use in worrying about what I can't change. So then he bent down and gathered a great armful of those beautiful buttercups and brought them back and gave them to his mother. And that's the story of Field of Buttercups by Alice 